Hey everybody, Jump Higher VA here. So bear with me here as I'm trying to do something new today. I want to talk to you about something. It's no secret that I love video games. Out of those games, I'd say like maybe 60% of them are your standard narrative-driven action-adventure games. I really like PlayStation as a platform because of this, and I do have a soft spot for a lot of Nintendo IPs, and really Nintendo themselves for putting out legendary games such as The Legend of Zelda. Even though they're Business practices are questionable at best. Another 20% would probably be your standard beat-em-ups and fighting games, things like your standard Smash Brothers, Mortal Kombat, Soul Calibur, or even games like God of War or Devil May Cry that technically have an underlying plot, but really the whole reason you're gonna go and play them is because you really just wanna go and boil the shit out of people. Another 15% would probably be JRPGs, Kingdom Hearts 2 being a personal favorite of mine, and of course a recent favorite being Persona 5. Then maybe 4% regular RPGs, and I guess your standard campaign in a shooter game, like Halo or Call of Duty. And then... Wait, do you see that? That 1% we have left over? Yeah, that's mobile games. Looking back, now that I'm really thinking about it, I tended to play more games on the go as a kid. I had my OG brick-shaped Nintendo DS with WarioWare Touched and New Super Mario Bros and all that sh Until I traded it in for an original 3DS, which I then traded in for a new 3DS XL because my eyeballs hungered for a larger and more retina-burning experience. I guess I still kind of blame the 3DS for making me wear glasses in the first place. That being said, I guess it's no real surprise that I usually turn to my phone to keep me busy while I'm out doing me tasks. Like when you're waiting at the doctor's office because you're still trying to milk your parents' health insurance while you still can, and it's been like 20 minutes since you signed a clipboard like, Jesus, where the hell are you, Dr. Grenadine? I've tried many mobile games, and even sunk money into a few of them. More than I'd really like to admit. None of them really stuck around that long for me, though. Even the ones I paid to get content in. I just kinda played them until I got my fix, and then put them down and never looked at them again, until I needed to free up storage on my phone and deleted them. However, one stood above them all, and I'm here to talk to you about it today. True Access's very own Street League skateboarding game, True Skate. I don't know what it is about this game that continues to rope me in time and time again. It's probably my passion for skateboarding and its community that keeps me going. Despite my skills on a skateboard remaining at the level of impressive only to small children and the elderly for the past 10 years. Either that, or maybe it's the feeling of basically having a tech deck with you wherever you go, without the embarrassment of actually having a tech deck with you wherever you go. What? Are you surprised that I could do that? You know, I, I actually think that these are kind of cool. The concept is simple. You see that board on the screen? Push it around and make it do all sorts of flips and shit. It's entirely physics-based, so any area or direction you swipe or tap, the board will respond to it. It's probably not that easy to learn if you don't already have prior knowledge about how certain skateboarding tricks work, but you definitely get the hang of it with enough time. Use a series of swipes and taps to control your little skateboard and make it do everything from crooked grinds to laser flips. But what makes the game unique is not that it's just the simple time waster. Oh, no, no, no. It's a brilliant combination. Fuck, it's not brilliant. It's a fucking mobile game. Fuck off. It's actually an ingenious blend of a time waster combined with an objective based game. Uh, let me clarify. The game has a variety of maps and skate parks that you can purchase and then choose from to skate inside of. I have all of them, please don't judge me. Inside each of these maps, there's a series of missions that you can complete, which will reward you with credits that you can use to purchase things within the game's store, like customization options and new skateboards. It's kind of amazing how simple it is to get sucked into playing multiple missions in a row, just to be able to unlock that one sweet looking deck or those purple wheels. And the game does this all by rewarding you for simply playing the game. The game drops you in the first part called Inbound. Wait, it's not called Inbound. It's called Underpass. <laughs> Fuck. The game drops you in the first part called Underpass, and asks you if you'd like to try a few tutorial segments. If you're like me, you'll take the time to play through these tutorials because you feel bad for the developers that put them there, but in all honesty, you can just jump right into scooting around the park and get a feel for the controls yourself. Now, once you get a feel for the park and its layout, you'll probably feel inclined to try out some of the missions. 
Luckily, if all of your scooting didn't teach you shit, you can actually skip some of the missions you deem too difficult by paying a certain number of credits to skip them. Honestly, it's kind of counterproductive to pay to skip a mission, as missions are your only real way to obtain a substantial amount of credits, aside from just outright buying them. But the catch is that if you don't complete or pay to skip a mission, you can't just ignore it and move on to the next one. Which is kind of bullshit, because there's definitely certain missions I prefer over others, but I can see why they did it that way. More levels you can't beat equals more credits required equals SPENDING MORE MONEY! <laughs> But if you don't want to become a whale, there is a secret method. It's just this one little thing. Are you sure you can, you know what, I'll, I'll just, I'll just draw you a diagram to hopefully make things a little easier. Um, yeah, I think this will help explain things. Yeah, all right. I guess I should actually talk about the missions themselves then. The missions you get presented are usually one of a few things. Follow the path, do the trick, or score as much as you can within the time limit. The last one being my personal favorite. As for how the game determines if you did it or not, the game first shows you a preview of what you have to do, and then there's a little meter that records how similarly you moved to the little silhouette in front of you. The only problem with this is that it's not exactly 100% accurate all the time. There have been times when I've executed the trick flawlessly and the game gives me a shit score, but there's other times where I didn't even do the trick they asked me to do or I didn't even follow the path all that well and the game still gives me a passing score. It's pretty damn hard to get over 90% accuracy on some of the levels, especially because the physics don't always work the way you expect them to, but luckily you never have to be perfectly accurate. Just a bronze medal or higher will give you access to the next mission. This is why I said I like the high score based missions the best, because these missions don't rely on accuracy. Much like using a tech deck, it's much easier to do a super ridiculous move or flip trick than it is to be precise and land an intricate combo. Each trick is given a certain number of points based on how difficult it is to do. So that's when you can bust out your fattest and meanest double flips and triple flips, or really just fuck around for the majority of the time until you get the gold medal score. Nothing in these missions says you really need to do things a certain way in order to progress, so you get to feel free to do whatever you want, as long as your score ends up being high enough by the end of the level. By the way, primo slides are like the best way to breeze through these levels, even though I do them 99% of the time by accident. But one thing is for sure, I cannot stand this UI. At least on the Android version I'm filming this video on, version whatever the fuck, I have to, I have to check my phone. Um, I actually can't find the version of my game. Uh, this is a bit problematic. I guess I'll check the app store. Okay, after several minutes, I scrolled down through the Google Play Store, and I'm playing on version 1.5.23. <sighs> Anyways, on this version of TrueSkate, the game gets rid of my bottom row of buttons, like the back and home buttons, so when I want to go back or home, I keep accidentally hitting the other menu options when I only intended to go back one page. So now I have to go back in and navigate all the way to the option I actually wanted before I accidentally pressed whatever button was under my fat fingers. It's fucking infuriating. Oh, and good luck getting back to where you were if you accidentally close out of the game. You don't even have to swipe to dismiss it. It just fucking resets everything. This isn't so much of a problem anymore, but past versions of the game used to even delete all of my credits for no fucking reason. Maybe it's just me because I've been playing the game for so long, but it's these random small things that really tend to piss me off. I've gotta say though, I gotta give credit where credit is due. The most fun part of this game is being able to customize your board. Maybe it's just me, but I love to self-insert myself into all of my video games. Yeah, that's right. I name my protagonist after myself. I make my custom character look like me. I play as the me characters in Smash. I want to save Hyrule and date all the cute anime girls, damn it! But for real, I do like matching up my board to be the same as the ones I currently have, or just to be of some decks that I've personally dreamed of owning. Not gonna lie though, once you pay for the infinite customization option, the idea of buying any of the in-game skateboard options sounds like a total waste. When you can put MC Ride on your grip tape so that it literally becomes death grips, the possibilities become endless. Literally. Endless. Spread eagle cross, cross, cross the block. Spread eagle cross, 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 cross the block. 
with the combination of free roaming and practicing a diverse variety of tricks on an even more diverse selection of parks, and the addictive concept of finishing all the missions on a single map, there's no wonder it's so easy to sink time into this game. Some maps are definitely better than others, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at you, Mondo Ramp. That, that, that shit's tight. It's perfect for just a few minutes of idle play while standing in line, or while waiting for the bus, or at the airport, and you have half an hour to kill. Last time I checked while filming for this video, the game is like two bucks or something in the App Store, which compared to when I bought it at like five dollars several years ago, is practically a steal for what you're getting. Some people argue that the cost of the game is pretty low because they try to sucker you in into trying to buy all the different parks and the different options and shit, but I mean honestly, the game itself, even without anything, is still pretty fun. I do genuinely recommend this game, despite having some gripes with it. The only thing I really have yet to mention is that the app also contains some other really cool and definitely interesting social features that I've never actually used so I won't be talking about them. Well, I'd say that's all I have left to say about the game, but I mean honestly, I could probably come up with some more things to say later on. And who knows, maybe I'll make a video like this about some other game at some point. I've honestly kind of dabbled with the idea for a while about making a video like this, and believe me, it's pretty far out of my comfort zone. But with that being said, I mean, half of the content that I watch is pretty much just this format times infinity, so I'm not exactly surprised that I decided to go through with it. I really want to know what you guys thought of it, and um if I should make more stuff like this. I really did enjoy making it, even though it ended up being a shit ton of work. Like, more work than I really put together for my music video, if you haven't seen that. Uh, but it was good work. Anyways, thank you. I hit my microphone. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this far if you did. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to drop a like so that I know you actually did. And comment your genuine thoughts on the matter. I do seriously read every single comment. So I'd love to see what people have to say. Even if it is your honest opinion, you know what, go for it. And on that note, this has been Jump Higher VA. And to you I say, so long. <laughs>